Here is a sweet little table that a client gave me to flip, and this actually is my first furniture flip in the tiny home. This sweet little table has a lot of beautiful detail and curves. It has been through a few moves though, and it's previously painted, so there are some scratches and dings all over. I do like the black paint, but I just feel like it can be and needs more. Plus, this little table is the perfect size to be my first flip in the tiny home since I'm now limited on space. There is only one little drawer, so I do go ahead and remove the hardware. Next up is to give this piece a thorough cleaning. So I use my double pail bucket. This is a Rubbermaid bucket that I got off Amazon. One side I have warm soapy dish water with Dawn dish soap and the other side I have clear water to come back and rinse. I go through first with the soapy water and give it a nice scrub down and get all the nooks and crannies and use my fingernail to press that washcloth into all the details. After I go over the piece with the soapy water, I do come back with a new cloth and give it a nice rinse to rinse away any remaining soap residue and then I let that surface air dry. Next up is to give the surface a scuff sand so I can get it ready to prime and paint. Now I did bring my sanders with me to the tiny home, but this is a small piece and it isn't in super rough shape. It just needs a gentle scuff sand so that paint and primer have something to grip onto. I use some 220 grit sandpaper over a sanding sponge or a sanding block and I go in and get all the areas that I can with that sanding block and then I do remove that sandpaper off the sanding block and do hand sand all the details and crevices. Next, I knock away the loose dust with a feather duster and then come back with a damp lint-free cloth and wipe away any remaining dust residue. Now as I do wipe that dust away, I do go inside multiple times and rinse out and reuse the same wash rag. And then I do let that surface air dry. Next up, it is time to start with primer. You can see I have some exposed wood and some still painted areas. So I'm going to use Dixie Belle's Boss in gray for my adhesion primer. Using the Dixie Belle Boss is going to seal in previous paint or wood tannins from bleeding through to my new paint job and it's going to give just better coverage so I'm actually using less of my expensive chalk paint. In the state of Oklahoma we have a couple of fake springs and summers that like to pop up before actual real spring gets here. This is one of those days, so it's about 80 degrees outside, so I just sit outside on the porch and I mist the surface with my spray bottle and just lightly mist it so I can have time to get the boss primer in one area before the sun dries it up. I make sure to work in sections and I'm just applying a thin layer of the boss. I let the first coat of primer dry for two hours and then come back add that second coat of primer. You can see with a second coat is where I get that full coverage. I do let the two coats of primer set for 24 hours before I move on to the next step. 
The next day, I grab one of my 220 grit sanding sponges and lightly go over the surface. I'm not using a lot of pressure here because I don't want to take my primer off, but I do want to knock out any hairs or debris that might have dried in my primer since I painted it outside. Then I come with a microfiber cloth and wipe away that sanding dust. For paint today, I am using Dixie Bell's Caviar. It is their black chalk mineral paint. So when I use Dixie Bell, it's really thick paint, so I normally mist the surface with a little bit of water and then apply the paint. And right about here is when I remembered that that isn't only just Dixie Bell's Caviar. I do have some other enamel paint mixed in with it, and I forgot to write on the label that it was a mix and no longer just the chalk mineral paint. So that was a whoopsie on my mistake. So note to self, learn from my mistake. If you add water to mix to spray or add another color in, make some kind of note on your label and don't expect yourself to remember the next time. Now this was the leftover paint that I had thinned out to spray. If you remember those black and gold chandelier nightstands that I did, this is that leftover paint from that. So to get full coverage, it ended up taking me three coats of this black paint. And just so you know, again, that's not normally how Dixie Belle's paint is. It's usually really thick and you have full coverage and one to two coats of paint. So this is just because I mix it with something else and thinned it to spray through my spray gun. Now, since this does have enamel paint mixed in it, I do, like I said, three coats and I do allow it to dry two hours in between each coat. And then all, I let all those coats of the paint dry overnight before I move on to the next step. Now I love the black paint like this table originally had, but I felt like it needed more and I decided that was to use this Magnolia Transfer. This is a redesign with Prima Transfer. I cut up the transfer into pieces and kind of arranged it by flowers and then leaf collection. I have used this transfer before on a previous table, so this is kind of what's left over from using it once before already. So I work with the blooms that I have first and kind of get a rough placement idea of how I want them. And then I start putting on the transfer. There is a back that you peel and then you stick the transfer down. There is a burnishing stick that comes with the transfer in the process of the move, I've lost all of my burnishing sticks. So right here, I'm actually using a spoon out of my kitchen. And you know, you gotta work with what you have. But putting a transfer on is pretty easy. Once you place the sticker down, you use whatever your device is that you're burnishing with, and you work in sections. You rub that transfer down to where it sticks to your paint and then start to pull up that plastic cover on it. And you just work in sections until you work yourself through the entire transfer. Then you come back with that clear plastic piece and rub your hand over the transfer to work out any wrinkles or air bubbles that might have gotten underneath the transfer during application. One thing to consider when you're putting your transfer on and thinking about your design, whatever you put on top is what is going to be visible. So I put the leaves in some of the flowers, but I wanted to make sure I had it placed to where the flowers were the most exposed and visible things. After I got the transfer on, I did scuff sand with a 400 grit sanding sponge. So this is a super fine sanding sponge. I just glided over the chalk painted area and slightly over the transfer and I'm getting it ready for a top coat. And I just want to note that I'm not using any power tools on this. So even though we're doing a lot to this table, it is a super beginner friendly furniture flip. For top coat, I am using Dixie Bell's Clear Coat and I love the satin finish. And this is not one of the products that I have tainted or mixed with. So it is just the straight clear coat in the satin. I use a brush to get into all the details and then I come back with a top coat sponge. I dip it into the top coat, wipe it on the edge so I can wipe away the excess 
and I go back over the detailed areas and all the flat surface with that top coat sponge. Applying the top coat with a brush leaves strokes, but I need that brush tip to get into all that detail. The sponge, as I go over the surface with the sponge, it wipes away those brush marks, so you get a smooth finish with no streaks, no lines. I do two coats of the top coat and let it set overnight, so the next day I grab my Dixie Bells Gilding Wax in gold. I use one of my smaller artist brushes and I added the goal accenting like the detail, the curves, just highlighting all the areas that I thought the goal would make it look more beautiful and stand out. So it's up to you how much gold you want to use and how much you don't. I like the goal, so I tend to add a lot. I also added the gold gilding wax to the handle and then I put the handle back on the drawer and then after that, this piece is done. Here's a quick reminder of the beginning of our curvy black beauty but in need of something more. And then what she looks like now. I love the original black paint look so much. I went with black paint again. It just definitely needed a new coat to cover up all those scratches. And then with the gilding wax, I only did one coat to give it more of a distressed and age gold look, which I love how that turned out. And then the magnolia flowers on top, just mwah, chef's kiss beautiful. I don't have any homestead updates, but I will the next video. I hope you enjoyed this flip. That's all I have for you today. Until next time.